Thinking Tackle, sponsored by Dower Infinity. King Tackle. As the match heightened in drama, the Germans waged war with the ground bait sling, but to no avail. Poor old Germany. But in next door swim, Dan lost his sling, but like a true captain, he dived in and plucked it on its descent into the depths of Gigantica. As Macmillan and Fairbrass hauled, poor Lion Cub Tom Dove off the action was fighting his demons. Macmillan's OCD reached new heights as his bivvy was cleaned for the 400th and 7th time in four days. What a freak. Young underwear model Mario started pulling strokes and had his pants whipped by referee Danny Turley. The free line supremo was back in the drink, this time for the James Bond auditions. Dan, you look great. And for me, it was a chance to return to my Iranian angling roots. No rod, reel, line, just a pair of great eyes, immense muscle, diving prowess, and the reactions of a grizzly bear. With activity hotting up, everything is pointing to an exciting climax to the Gigantica European Carp Cup. Welcome to the latest episode of Thinking Tackle. I'm Ali Hamidi and we're still at Gigantica Lake where England are absolutely hammering Benelux in Germany. Mr McMillan, how big is this absolute stunner? This little one, Al, is 24 and a half pounds. All right, and anything else in the night? Yeah, I had a, a small 21, 21 2. Um, and we also we lost that fish that, that did us in a snag again last night. So uh, two 20s is a, a small consolation but for, for the loss. But you're building up a big lead. Yeah, I think we're about 150, 160 pounds in front now. But uh, they're twitching. There's some very twitchy anglers about on the lake. Well, I don't even think their bobbins are twitching, mate. So <laughs> I don't think there's any of that going on. Uh, things are going really well. You've got a, you've got a method that's working for you. Yeah. I think what we're going to do is going to get this fish back. Macmillan is mauling them. Let's have a look at his rigs. With Mr. McMillan quietly winkling a few fish out of an unfancied area, I bet you guys at home are dying to find out some of the trickery of this in his rig box, and that's exactly what we're going to do now. So, Mr. McMillan, something between your legs that you're about to show me. <laughs> there you go, mate. Right, what we have here, which is what is doing the damage, it's quite a quite a brutal way of fishing for me, really, but it's working. So, uh, we've got a, we've got a gravel safe zone leader. Yep. With a gravel gravel hybrid lead clip. One thing to mention there is, is that is only nicked on probably about a mil and a half. So yeah, you've bet, you've bet what you're saying, you've literally got it over one of the teeth yeah. on the hybrid yeah. lead clip. Yeah. The, the reason for that? Uh, the rod that's doing all the damage in the snags, I want that lead off straight away. I'm fishing all locked up, quite a tight line. So as soon as it's picked it up and shaking its head, the lead's off straight away so the fish will come up. Yeah. Straight above the snags. And it's worked the last couple of fish. I've lost a couple in there, but that's the nature of snag fishing, you know, so. So, so you've adjusted things from the start of the session yeah. to, to that sort of quick release element. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and are you doing anything with the actual rod set up to, 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 aid, to aid that? Yeah, the clutches are completely locked up, which I really, I'm not into that sort of fishing at all. I don't do it, I don't like it, but it's a match. So we've got to beat them, you know, so whatever, whatever means necessary. But I've also got a big bank stick there, so the rod is, the kind of bend of the rod is all that the fish has got to take and then I'm on it straight away, which is why I'm not fishing now at night, because I won't be there quick enough and it'll just do me straight in the, straight in the snags. Okay, cool. Um, right, moving on to lead, I can see that's quite large for the area you're actually fishing. If I'm honest, it's the biggest lead I've got with me. It's three and a half ounce. If I had a five ounce, it'd be on there. I want the, I'm fishing a tight line, so as soon as the fish picks the rig up, the lead will drive the hook home, but then the weight, when it's shaking its head, it'll be straight off. Lot of resistance there. One, so I can keep the line tight, and two, that it'll, it'll nail the rig home, you know? So what you're saying, big lead, 
helps hook the fish, and then once they shake their head, the minute that leg comes off the fish, oh, I'm free. Yeah, yeah. Shoot, up to the surface. Yeah. Right, yeah. excellent. Let's move on to the hook link now, mate. What's the connection process here? What we've got here, we've got a little, just a little quick link here. Yep. That's just to finish it off. I know you think that's too long, but I like, <laughs> but I like doing it like that, so it works It's only because I'm tight, mate. Well, yeah, you'll get two out of that, won't you? Yeah, free. Especially. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hybrid soft in brown. Just to match the late bed, really. Okay. A couple of bobs of putty. Yep. To keep everything pinned down. Um, we've got a size six wide gape X with a little ring just to act as a blow, but quite a big gap there between the ring and the 20 mil bottom bait. That's which, about half a centimetre, isn't it? Yeah, very, very important that you've got you've got to have a, a, a good gap, you know, to, for the rig to, to to do its job properly, you know. Uh, and then we've got a little tutti frutti just pop up on the end as a bit of visual. Little sight. So, I mean, it's interesting what you said about the putty there, because they're two, two nice big bits, but you did touch earlier about how it's very flat. You know, you've got the gravel, the safe zone leader, all of that. It's, everything's pinned down tight to the yeah, lake bed. Yeah, everything's pinned down. I've done as much as I, I can to camouflage it because the water, like we say, is so clear. Yep. You really don't want kind of a silt leader with a green clip. You, know, you probably still get bites, but you yeah. want to be doing as much as you can to camouflage everything. It's those extra percents, mate, that even though you're in an unfancied swim, you're you're catching as many as anybody, which is, yeah. you know, Seems to be what testimony. You know, yeah. 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 OK, I, can, I know you've got a couple of other bits yeah. set up down here. Um, this is the one with a curve shank. Fold that up you there. So what's the thinking behind this one? It's, it's not dissimilar to the last one same material hybrid soft brown there's no putty on there yet but yep. that would have putty on when it goes out that is my i mean i do use the kd quite a lot but that is just my version of it where the silicon is just there just to trap it just to keep the hair in place on the yep. cast yep so it's just back if it's, I... ju it's just balancing the hook is yep. lying flat but that is that is a dumbbell bottom bait with a bit of plastic that just pulls it up off the off the, off the deck again. again bit of visual yep and it's a rig that just nails them. You know, they really find them curved hooks difficult to spit out. Yeah, especially when you've got to use them barbless. They're curving in, curving out. Yeah. Well, I know you've just got a couple of other little hook bait variations here. Um, want to talk through that? That basically, Al, is the same rig as, as I showed you with a tutti frutti pop up on it. Yep. That is just a high vis, milky toffee. Again, just something a bit different, you know? Yeah, so changing colour, keep, keeping, keeping things varied, keeping them guessing and yeah. hopefully nicking your bite. Yeah. The, on, the, only, the only rig I've caught on uh, twice, not on the same rig, but on the same presentation as the, as the orange, the Tutti Frutti and the 20mm cell. I just keep changing them around. Just, you, I just want that bit of visual. Uh, but I have had a bite on this as well, which is really, really gruesome and really blatant, but a double 20mm cell. That's like a welly rig, isn't it, mate? Well, it is, mate. Yeah, I, I, would, I would cast that on welly, but it's a big bit of metal, a couple of big up baits. They will really find that difficult to spit out. Well, there we have it. Mr McMillan keeping it simple, ringing the changes, and it's obviously working. Well, we've seen his rigs, and we can see exactly why they're so good. What an absolutely stunning, stunning, stunning carp. carp. It's spawned out, but how big is it? 32 and a half, mate, this one. Looks like it could be in an Oxford lake, doesn't it? How long have you actually been fishing since you got the rods back out after dinner? Uh, ten minutes this went, but I'd, they'd been in, they'd been reeled in for about four hours, and I let them have about four kilo bait before I went to dinner. Um, so see a couple when I come back round with the water. Uh, so they're obviously there, and they like to be in those snags. And yeah, ten minutes. Do you think um, putting the bait out before dinner was uh, critical in this capture? Um, well, I've used well, I've used 25 kilo in three days, so they're obviously liking what I'm putting out in front of them. But yeah, the, a free meal never does them any harm, does it? Oh, really? What? What are you using? A mixture of boilies or just one type of boilie? Just one, 20 mil cell. That's all I'm putting out. No spod, no ground bait balls, nothing. Just boilies Re over a big area as well. Well, they seem to be getting bigger, Ting Tong, <laughs> and that is, you know, quite possibly one of the most stunning carp you're likely to see. And. Uh, you know, for all its intents and purposes, probably a 40 pounder yeah, yeah. before spawning. Well spawned out, yeah. Are you confident of an even bigger one? Of course. Well, Ting Tong, always confident, flying the English flag. England are not resting on their laurels. Even though they've got a convincing lead, I think the Dovster has got a little trick up his sleeve. Dovey, where are you off to, son? 
Well, I'm off to the swim next door. I think um, in my drawer I get two swims. I've got sort of the primary swim on this side, the first one, and then the second swim down there, which is probably 40, 50 yards up the bank. Yeah. Um, and the fish have totally swung around with the wind. Um, it was primarily blowing a northwesterly, I think, and now it's blowing an easterly. So the fish are moving all over the other side and into the middle. Yeah. Um, and it did look good in there, first of all. So this I'm is big girls, isn't it? And then your other swim available to you is Oblivion. The one next yep. Um, it did look good in there, first of all, so I thought I'd set some traps out in the corner. Um, but now it's totally swung around, so I'm going to move next door and see if I can put them further out into the middle where the fish are. Yep, so what, you know, you've got to go into the middle. Have you got any other plans? And I know you were chatting to Dan earlier, yep. maybe a tactical change. What's the, you know, what's on the agenda in there? Just more bait, I think. Yep. So there's loads of carp in here. Um, and I think the, the best thing to do is just put, a, put a lot of bait out and see if you can draw them towards you because fishing little bits and bobs here just isn't going to work because I'm not on many fish. So I think I'm going to have to see if I can draw the fish in a little bit. Now, at the moment, England have got two pairs catching. Ben Lux, there's only been one guy out of their team that's caught. If England can get three of you all catching, yeah. do you think victory's guaranteed? I think we could run away if we all start catching, but the other teams could start catching as well, so you can never say anything, can you? Right, well, I'll let you get in there, and then we'll catch up with you once you're set up and raring to go. Okay, lovely.